we're going to talk about microscopy, types of microscope, how they function, and the advantages and disadvantages of each. In addition, I'm going to give you some key definitions that you will need to learn. The type of microscope that you'll be most familiar with is the optical microscope, more commonly known as the light microscope. This is the one that you will have used in school labs before. These were originally made popular by Antoine van Leeuwenhoek, uh, who lived between 1632 and 1724. He's a really interesting character, and if there's a little bit of extra reading that you fancy doing, I'd recommend reading about his life. The second type of microscope that you'll be learning about at A-level is the electron microscope that uses electrons instead of light to see the image. There are two types of electron microscope, the transmission electron microscope and the scanning electron microscope. Now, these are pretty amazing pieces of kit. Uh, and the first electron microscope that was uh, developed that was better than the optical microscope was developed in 1933 by a guy called Ernst Ruskin. So if that's something you're interested in researching, please feel free to do that. Now, you'll learn about the electron microscope at A-level and you'll see lots of beautiful images from the electron microscope, but you probably won't ever um, use one because they are pretty complex and expensive pieces of kit. So why do we use microscopes? The obvious answer is so that we can see things that we wouldn't be able to see with the naked eye. Microscopes do two things. They magnify an image. So they create an image that we can see that is larger than the actual specimen that we're trying to see. And the second thing that they do is they resolve an image. They make an image clear. So these are two key terms that you need to understand, magnification and resolution. And when we're looking at the differences between microscopes, we care about their relative magnifications and their relative resolutions. Take a minute to look here at these definitions of magnification and resolution. One equation that you need to know is the magnification equation. The equation for magnification is size of image divided by size of specimen. This can also really easily be presented like this. Using these triangles enables you to rearrange the equation very easily so you can calculate the image size, the actual size of your specimen, and the magnification. The unit for magnification is times. One common error that students make when carrying out magnification calculations is that they forget to ensure that your specimen size unit and your image size unit are the same. You need to ensure that all units are the same before carrying out this calculation. Otherwise, you will get an error in your, in your answer. Let's talk about the optical microscope or the light microscope. Light microscopes work by shining a light through a thin specimen on a stage the light is first refracted by the curved objective lens and then travels up to the eyepiece lens where it is further refracted and brought to your eye. That's the job the microscope does. Using very precisely made glass lenses, it takes the minutely separated light rays coming from something tiny and spreads them apart so they appear to be coming from a much bigger object. On most light microscopes, you can switch the objective lenses to change the magnification. The lower magnification lenses are less curved than the higher magnification lenses. In general, the best optical microscopes have a magnification of up to times 1500 and a resolution of up to 200 nanometers. So how do we use a light microscope? The first thing we want to do is carefully cut a very thin slice of our specimen. The reason we need it to be thin is, is twofold. Firstly, because we want to allow the light to get through. And secondly, because we only really want to view a single layer of cells or perhaps a very small number of layers of cells. Once we've got our specimen, we're going to try and place it flat onto our slide. 
when we put it on our slide, we're either going to put a drop of stain or a drop of water on top. Uh, we might use stains because we're trying to colorize our sample. And why do we want to do that? We want to do that to provide contrast between the different parts of our specimen to enable us to be able to see the different parts that are there. And there are many different stains that will be available for you to use depending on the types of cells or the types perhaps of organelle that you're trying to see. Once you've added your stain or your water, you're then going to have to add a cover slip. One thing to always be aware of when adding a cover slip is you want to add it very, very carefully, lowering it at an angle uh, to prevent the formation of air bubbles. Because if you get air bubbles, when you look at it under the microscope, you'll see the air bubbles uh, and as opposed to being able to see the specimen. Let's talk about the pros and cons of an optical microscope. With an optical microscope, you can view living specimens. And because of this, that means you can view metabolic processes occurring inside cells. For instance, you could see movement within a cell, or you could see the movement of cells themselves. And this is really important. In addition, optical microscopes are relatively cheap and easy to transport in comparison to an electron microscope. Some problems with the light microscope are, first of all, the actual act of the preservation or staining of the specimen. These can produce something called artifacts. Artifacts are things that you see under the microscope that aren't really there, or when a specimen has somehow been disrupted or changed in shape or structure, so that what you're looking at under the microscope is not really what would be there in the actual tissue. In addition, optical microscopes have lower powers of magnification and resolution in comparison with electron microscopes, and therefore you cannot study intracellular structures, so you can see in much less detail and much lower map magnification than if you were looking at an electron microscope. Let's talk about the electron microscope next. An electron microscope is a microscope that uses a beam of accelerated electrons as a sort of source of illumination instead of light. And because the wavelength of an electron can be up to 100,000 times shorter than that of visible light photons, electron microscopes have a higher resolving power than light microscopes and therefore can reveal to us the structure of much smaller objects. Now, a transmission electron microscope uses an electron beam to illuminate the specimen. The denser parts of the specimen absorb more electrons and therefore appear darker than less dense parts of the specimen. So as the electron beam passes through the specimen, it will be absorbed by more dense parts and it will be transmitted through less dense parts. These scattered electrons are then magnified and the image is usually displayed on a computer. It doesn't go to somebody's eye. Scanning electron microscopes work slightly differently. A beam of electrons is aimed at the specimen, and when it hits the specimen, it causes it to give off electrons, which are then detected by a computer. The number and spread of electrons given off by the specimen gives us detail about the composition and topography of the surface of the specimen. So we can see that with the transmission electron microscope, we can see the inner workings of a cell or structure, whereas with a scanning electron microscope, we see the outside parts of a cell or structure. Let's look at the pros and cons of optical microscopes versus electron microscopes and transmission versus scanning electron microscopes. Whenever you're answering an exam question about microscopes, it's really important that you always use comparative language, greater resolution or um, more magnification or you need to use thinner specimens, for instance. So it's really important that you use that sort of language in your answers in order to attain the marks. So transmission electron microscopes have higher magnification resolution in comparison with both optical and scanning electron microscopes. TEMs also allow the detail of internal structures to be seen. They allow us to see intracellular structures and the detail of organelles. This is hugely important in biology, to be able to see the internal structure of a mitochondria or a nucleus or a chloroplast. However, they only produce two-dimensional images and they only produce black and white images. Although you can add false color later and there's some really beautiful examples of transmission electron micrographs. 
you also need to prepare much thinner specimens compared to optical or scanning electron micrographs and therefore it's a much more complex procedure for preparation of specimens. You also need a uh, more um, specialized machinery. So you need to use a machine called a microtome that you would find in a laboratory in order to cut these very thin specimens. With the scanning electron microscope, as electrons do not pass through the specimen, you cannot see the internal detail of the specimen. So you can really only see the structure of things. But unlike TEMs, they produce a three-dimensional image. And just like TEMs, they produce a black and white image to which you can add false color later. But a benefit of the SEM in comparison to the TEM is that you don't need to produce such thin specimens. There are a few issues with both TEMs and SEMs. Firstly, you need to use a vacuum. Now, this is really important because there can't be any other things, there can't be any other molecules that would would change the direction of the electrons. The electrons need to be able to move freely in a continuous beam towards the specimen, so you have to use a vacuum. Therefore, the specimen that you're studying must be dead. So you can't ever study any movement of a specimen with an electron microscope. And artifacts are really common. This is because electron microscopes have a much greater level of preparation than optical microscopes. Therefore, you need to do many repeats to determine what is actually an artifact and what is real in your specimen. So it's a bit more complicated. And that's really everything that you need to know about electron and optical microscopes at this point. You need to make sure that you could explain the difference between optical, transmission and scanning electron microscopes. Well done.